Welcome back all you beautiful bulletproof handyman and women to the bulletproof handyman business YouTube channel. So today's conversation is going to be about pricing flat rate hourly versus the way I do it, which is a trip fee plus whatever I decide. So I'm going to read a comment for you that I got. This comment is what prompted this video. I did get a little bit offended and worked up when I first read it. I'm not anymore because everybody's got their own way of doing things. I have my niche. Everybody else has their niche. None of us are really honestly doing exactly the same thing. So I'm going to read this comment for you real quick. It's, it's a comment that was left on one of my pricing videos. And what he says is, I can't believe you don't do flat rate pricing. Every company I've ever worked for and when I started my business uses flat rate. Every property manager I work for, it's the first thing they ask for. <clears throat> that and hourly rates for larger jobs. It seems very unprofessional not to have these rates established. Consistent pricing is vital when doing lots of work for the same company. Some of my customers have 300 plus apartments in one location. So I'm going to say first of all, Let's say I was put into a debate and I was asked to take this guy's side. I could totally take his side. I could make a very good argument why it is absolutely unprofessional to not have flat rate pricing. However, I can also do an equally good job of taking the other side, which is to say that flat rate pricing just simply doesn't work and it especially does not put you in a position to maximize the amount of money you make. So we're going to break down this uh, comment just bit by bit, and that's going to lead us into all of the data and the info that I'd like for you to take away from this. Number one, he says, I can't believe you don't do flat rate pricing. Okay, I find that strange because I'm not the only one, so it shouldn't be hard to believe that I'm pricing everything I do the same way that thousands and tens of thousands of other people are pricing theirs. Uh, almost every electrician, plumber, HVAC guy, cleaner, landscaper, all of them that are working for the property management companies that I work for, all of them are in a position where they have a base rate, which for me I call a trip fee. You can call it whatever you want. Um, but they all have a base rate that they're going to charge for showing up. And then they're going to charge something more than that depending on how the work goes. So, for example, the landscapers, they're going to charge probably, I bet it's 125 150 for most of them to show up. And then they're going to work for two and a half hours with three guys. And they're not doing a simple calculation of X number of guys times X number of hours. It's going to depend a lot on how much stuff they have to haul to the dump. It's going to depend on how far away they had to park their trailer to get to the property that they're working on because they have to spend more time lugging stuff back and forth. It's going to change depending on whether they had to use a lot of gas-powered equipment that uses fuel. Um, nobody that owns a business wants to sit down and like develop an algorithm to take into account the 27 different variables that could change your pricing on each job. And if you just do a flat rate and say, okay, well, I mow yards for $25, well, that's great. But what size yard for $25? Uh, can it be a hilly yard or is it a flat yard that you're doing for $25? What if the grass is three feet high versus four inches high? So now if we want to do some sort of flat predictable rate, now we've got to go in and measure the grass before we start, measure it after we're done, take some protractor measurements of the steepness of the hill, take into account 18 different things just to come up with our price. And now we've got a bill for another hour because it took us an hour to figure all that out. So it shouldn't be hard to believe that I don't do flat rate pricing because it is not uncommon to not do flat rate pricing. So the next thing he says is every company I've ever worked for and when I started my business uses flat rate. Well, what you use doesn't really have anything to do with whether or not this is a good thing or a bad thing, but you're claiming every company you've ever worked for uses flat rate. Again, Maybe you've only worked for companies that use flat rate, but I work for a lot of companies and none of them want a flat rate. Most of them asked if I had flat rates when I initially contacted them the very first time I ever communicated with them. One of the first questions is, what's your trip fee? What's your hourly rate? And do you have flat rates for your jobs? And every time I've given them the same answer, I give them a spiel and I'll give you the spiel at the end of this that I give them. But basically, he's saying every company he's ever worked for. So I understand if you've only ever worked for companies,
that utilize flat rates, then I could understand why you might think that I'm the oddball and that it's unbelievable and unprofessional. But the truth is, this is not uncommon at all. And in my opinion, using flat rates, and don't get me wrong, I have some flat rates, and I tell the property managers that when I'm doing a move out where I have a lot of jobs all at one location and I'm making only one trip to pick up supplies, then I have a trip fee that covers the trip there. And then more than half the work I do there is invoiced on a flat rate. And then the other half is not something that can just be shoehorned into a flat rate. So I give a description of the work and I tell them how much I charged. And it's not hourly. There's hourly. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pause and interject this right here. I've said it many times and I want to really beat it in. Hourly pay incentivizes laziness. That is what it does. You can... You can look at it any other way you want to. You can even say things like, well, only if you're a lazy person. No, hourly pay incentivizes laziness. If I'm getting paid by the hour to do a job, regardless of what my own personal morals and ethics are, regardless of how hard I'm going to work simply because I'm a hard worker and a good man, regardless of any of that, you can't argue the fact that if you pay somebody hourly, you have incentivized them to use more hours to get the same amount of work done. If they have one job for that day and they're getting paid, let's call it 50 an hour for the one job, they've got choices. Work really hard and efficiently and get it done in an hour and make 50 bucks today or make three different trips to Home Depot, spend a whole lot of time bullshitting with a tenant and make 150 bucks that day for the same easy work. So... The incentive, regardless of whether people follow through on that incentive, hourly pay and billing things hourly incentivizes taking longer to do the work and incentivizes laziness and inefficiency. So that's for sure what I've got to say about hourly. Now, as far as flat rate, as I was talking about before, there are just far too many variables to be able to put a flat rate on every different kind of job. <clears throat> so next he says... Every property manager I work for, it's the first thing they ask for. Well, yes, like I said, uh, not every for sure, but I would say 70% of the property managers that I've worked for, all of them ask, what's my trip fee and my hourly rate? Right off the bat, they want to know, what's my trip fee and my hourly rate? Because what they're used to, at least here in Tucson, is a base trip fee, and this is going to be typically for most guys, I think around $75 to $100. And then their hourly rate is added to the trip fee. My trip fee includes some amount of work. Most guys have a lower trip fee, say $80, plus let's call it $40 an hour. So they charge $80 for showing up, $40 for the first hour. So that's $120 minimum that they have, which is basically my $125 minimum. The only difference being I'm not charging them by the hour. So... If I'm there for, let's say, 45 minutes, I can still charge $185. And if they call the tenant and say, how long was he there? And, and the tenant says he was here for 27 minutes. Well, they can't call me and say I overcharged them, right? Because I didn't give them an hourly rate. I never told them that I was going to charge $40 an hour on top of the $80 just to show up at the door. What I told them, $125 minimum, and that's just the minimum, and then I charge whatever is a fair rate, and I explain to them that I know what the fair rates are because I've been doing this, and I just simply charge what I know to be a good rate. And my incentive to keep my pricing in line is that if I'm too expensive, you're going to stop sending me work, right? So as long as they don't stop sending me work, I'm not too expensive because if they had cheaper guys who were as qualified and reliable as me, they'd already be using them. There's no reason to keep using me. If my pricing structure is so horrible and I'm charging too much money, no reason to keep using me if you've got guys that are as good as me for the same price or less. So <clears throat> next he said, seems very unprofessional to not have these rates established. Well, again, I mean, that's your opinion that it's unprofessional, but it is not uncommon and it's not what any of my property managers, nobody has asked me for that. They have all asked me initially the very first time I talk to them, do I have flat rates? And when I've answered no, they've then asked me, okay, what's my pricing structure? And then I explain it to them and they're happy. And we've been doing business, you know, my two biggest clients, both of them I have been with since, so it's three years this month that I've had my business. 
Both of my biggest clients, the two of them combined, comprise probably 90% or at least 85% of my work. It varies throughout the year. But those two biggest clients I've been with for way over two years, probably about two and a half. And in two and a half years, they have just consistently continued to send me the same work over and over again with what I would call the same pricing. And I say the same pricing because you don't have to have a flat rate in order for your prices to be standardized. My, For example, say I'm going to recalk a shower. So it's going to be $125 if that's all I'm doing there because every one of them is going to take me far less than an hour and require almost no materials and I'm going to be in and out and I'm just going to charge my normal $125. If I've added it, so by the way, that's standard. So that that's their flat rate. Essentially, my flat rate, if I had one, it's just $125 for damn near everything. Now, if it's a bigger job, then it's going to be more, obviously. Um, but anyways, I'm caulking a shower. It's going to be $125 every single time. Now, if I'm on a move out, caulking a shower is more like $50 to $60. And the reason it's $50 to $60 is because I've already charged a $125 trip fee to show up at the move out. My, my, my move outs are different. There's a $125 move out trip fee that doesn't cover any work at all, but it does cover me showing up, inspecting, making my shopping list, going to Home Depot, coming back from Home Depot, invoicing at the end, uploading pictures, things like that, all the non-billable items that are not actual work. But then the shower itself, I'm going to charge typically $50 to $65, somewhere in that range. And the reason that number changes, and the reason that I don't like flat rates, is exactly this. So out of all my properties, I have properties that I would call slums, very few of them, like three that I have that I go to routinely, where honestly, my honest opinion is this is a slum and this owner shouldn't be allowed to have a rental property because he doesn't take care of it. But everywhere from slums up through literally five, six, seven, eight million dollar homes in the foothills. All right, so number one, the quality that you're going to put into these jobs, and I know some of y'all are craftsmen and you're going to get on to me about how my quality should always be perfect. It's not true. It shouldn't always be perfect. I'm providing a service and my customers don't always want to buy a Lamborghini. Sometimes they're just looking for a Toyota Corolla. And if I can sell them a Toyota Corolla, a perfectly good, usable, not a lemon, just a good, solid Toyota Corolla, that's what some of them want to buy, right? So the rich people want the Lamborghini, the poor people want the Toyota Corolla. So I go in here in houses that are any range of pricing. The quality that I put into these homes is also going to change within that range. Uh, same thing with drywall patches, matching texture. If I'm in a slum on the south side, I'm not going to match the tech. I'm not going to put that extra hour into getting a perfect texture match when I can put an hour less in and still get an 80% texture match in a slum that's where my patch is the prettiest thing in the place. You know what I mean? Number two, uh, there's different sizes. There are tubs with showers. There are standing showers. There are tiny standing showers. There are giant standing showers. There are giant garden tubs next to a giant standing shower and all manner in between. There are caulk jobs that I can get done in literally 10 minutes where it's, especially if it's just like a general plastic tub with a plastic surround, just a normal like tiny little, you know, spec home tub and surround. I can get all that old caulk out, get everything clean, get all the new caulk in and everything smoothed out in about 10 minutes, maybe 15 if I'm pushing it, but 10 minutes. And then there are the giant standing showers that are tile, three different colors of grout, clear silicone where the glass is, white caulk where the curb is. Those might take me an hour and a half to two hours, depending on what kind of shape they're in. So I can't have a standard price for re-caulk bathtub or re-caulk shower. You can't give a flat rate. I'm not saying you can't, I guess. You could. But if you did you would be losing money on a lot of jobs and you would be way overcharging on a lot of jobs. Now, I don't mind doing that. Some of my work is set up that way. For example, a bathroom sink, the pop-up stopper where you pull up here and then the poppers down here going up and down. For those, I do have a flat rate. I believe it's like, it's between 55 and 65. I don't know off the top of my head because I've got it already in my software and I just click on it and put a quantity. 
But I know with those, I know what the worst case scenario is. Because the worst case scenario is I have to remove the drain and everything and install a whole new everything from scratch. $65 when I'm already, I've already got my trip fee, I'm already on site and I already have my parts and materials. $65 is plenty for me to do that because that's not going to take me more than 30 minutes. So already I'm making more than my $100 an hour with that $65 to do that job. So that's real simple. But the point is, uh, if you standardize your prices, you're going to have to either lose money on complex jobs or you're going to have to charge too much on the simple jobs. And I can't charge my slumlords the exact same rates that I charge my rich folks. You know what I mean? It's all different charges. It's all different sizes and shapes. You just cannot standardize it and be fair at the same time. The only way to standardize that, or as this guy calls it, flat rate. The only way to give a flat rate on these things is to be willing to lose money quite often and to be willing to do substandard work for too much money other times because, and I don't mean substandard, I mean for the amount of money, the work would be substandard because again, let's say I'm in a slum and there's a light fixture that needs to be replaced. Exact same thing, slum versus a mansion, light fixture needs to be replaced. Well, in a slum, typically it's gonna be a cheap light fixture that I'm gonna be able to easily and quickly find a replacement for. I'm not gonna to have to drive around for a real long time and go to five stores trying to find it. I'm not gonna to have to order it. It's gonna be a cheapo ceiling fan from Home Depot. I'm probably gonna show up with one already if I know I'm working on a ceiling fan because when they're like 30 or 40 bucks, the cheap ones from Home Depot, when they go on sale, I'll buy five of them and just put them in the truck and I'll get them used up over the next few months. So chances are I'm not going to make any trip to Home Depot. I'm going to take that old fan down really quickly. I'm going to have the new fan up because it's a tiny cheap one. It's going to be up in like 30 minutes and I'm going to charge what I'm going to charge for that. Now let's take a ceiling fan on an $8 million home in the foothills. First of all, I'm going to have to drive way further. And yes, I can charge for driving. Now we can start itemizing everything and making one simple job take up 12 lines of explaining how each and every individual little rate was calculated. But instead, I just recognize, okay, so I'm going to have to drive 50 minutes to this job. And I'm not going to be able to bring a matching replacement with me because I need to actually get there and look at it. Even the picture isn't enough because I'm not going to have the tenant get on a ladder on a 14-foot vaulted ceiling trying to read the brand name of the ceiling fan. So I know I'm going to drive there and it's going to take 50 minutes. I know that it's going to take me 30 minutes once I'm there to even figure out what kind of replacement I'm going to need on that ceiling fan. And the reason is because in this $8 million house, I'm going to put a tarp down on the floor before I bring any tools in. And then I'm going to have to bring my ladder in and put it on top of the tarp and get way up there. And then I also know that on top of my ladder near the ceiling, I'm probably going to touch the ceiling to steady myself while I try to look around all over the ceiling fan for a brand name and a model number if I'm going to need to replace it. So now I'm also wearing white gloves. And not only am I wearing white gloves, but I'm changing them frequently because I'm going to forget and touch something like the top of the fan blade covered in dust and I don't want fingerprints on their ceiling. And this goes on and on and on. The level of service that's expected from a very rich person way up in the foothills is very different from the level of service expected down in the slums. And I'm sorry if y'all don't like my terminology, but I'm trying to tell you the truth about how this business works. You work on slums and you work on multi-million dollar mansions. The quality level expected is different. The level of service expected is different. Everything's different. All of your nice places, Home Depot is always going to be very far away because they don't put Home Depots on really expensive land. So you got to leave the expensive area just to get to your Home Depot. Or you may have to make multiple trips because now you got to go order a ceiling fan because Home Depot isn't going to carry a like kind for a ceiling fan that costs 600 bucks. They're going to have $600 fans, but they're not going to be like kind. So you're going to have to order it. So again, I can't do flat rate pricing and be running my business the best way possible. I would literally have to run my business less well, less efficiently, less profitably, uh, le less of everything. My entire business would come down if I did flat rate pricing. Now, 
He also says consistent pricing is vital when doing lots of work for the same company. Now this I can get on board with because what he started out with was I can't believe you don't do flat rate pricing. And then later his argument is that consistent pricing is vital. Well, yes, I agree. Consistent pricing is vital, but consistent pricing is not the same thing as flat rate pricing. Flat rate pricing is a flat rate. Hourly is a flat hourly rate. Consistent just means consistent, and that's what my property managers do get from me. They are very aware on any given job that they give me, and I've, I've learned from them as well. For example, I found out early on when my pricing was so low that they started sending me a whole lot of something, and I realized, oh, they're sending way too much of this really hard job because I'm not charging enough, and as my pricing goes up, the number of work orders for that comes down. If my pricing goes up too high, I start getting questions about my pricing, and then I bump it back down a little bit, or maybe I just keep it there and let them complain a little more, but eventually they stop complaining. But the point is, <clears throat> my pricing is consistent. It's based on what I found they are or are not okay with paying, and it's also based on me just playing around with my prices and moving them up and down and seeing what it does so that I can pinpoint where they need to be. So as an example, let's say I'm called out for a leaky sink. If I go out and do a leaky sink and I send an invoice and the description on the invoice says that I replaced a strainer basket and I replaced all of the drain plumbing because all of it was junk and corroded and I replaced a shutoff valve. Now I could have some sort of set pricing for that and it would probably come somewhere close to what I'm going to be charging most of the time, but that's not the same as flat rate where you can be held to a flat rate. If I do that, my property managers know that for a job where I did a strainer basket and a lot of plumbing under the sink and a shutoff valve, they already know that I basically just spent a half a day doing plumbing work. So they know that I'm gonna probably charge the maximum that I can charge, which is without further approval, without calling them and getting approval, my max is 350. That's, that's the cutoff that these property managers that I find to be nearly across the board with all these companies. They have an agreement with the homeowner that if it's under 350, the property manager can approve it. If it's over 350 and it's not an emergency, then they have to call the homeowner to get the homeowner's approval. So I try to keep everything under 350. So they know if I spent a half a day doing plumbing work, they already know I'm gonna charge 350. I'm gonna, whatever the materials were, I'm gonna deduct from 350 and whatever's left is going to be my labor because they know I'm just going to end up maxing that out. And they also appreciate that I don't call them and say, hey, I need you to call the homeowner so that I can charge $368. You know what I mean? Like, I'll just discount it to the $350 if it means I'm still just in and out and I don't have to wait an hour not doing any work until I get approval because that wastes my hour, that wastes the property manager's hour. It wastes everyone's time. Uh, so consistent pricing is vital. Yes, it is. My pricing is consistent, that not being flat rate and not being strictly hourly, not falling into those two categories does not exclude consistent pricing. Consistent pricing is just simply being consistent with your pricing, which is what I am. And finally, he finishes off by saying, some of my customers have 300 plus apartments in one location. Well, that, sir, is very different. That is not what I do. I don't work on apartments ever, 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 ever. None of my work is on apartments. I have three condos that are kind of in an, an apartment looking location. Perhaps they were apartments once and now they're condos. Who knows? Um, and when I say three, I mean like three residences, not three giant buildings with 200 in each building. I mean like three individual living rooms three kitchens, just three properties that happen to be in a condo. The rest of mine, as I was saying, all the way from the slums up to $8 million houses in the foothills. So long story short, guys, I guess the whole point of this video is you should be consistent. You should strive to standardize everything you can standardize because that will save you time. Um, but if, you're, if you call a property manager, and I'll tell you what, I've had a few. Just a few. Like I had one, it was uh, Rentals America. And I think they're actually all over America. They're not unique to just, they're not like a local Tucson company. 
Rentals America was very excited to work with me, and they said, hey, we're going to have so-and-so give you a call and kind of walk you through how we do everything, and we can't wait to start working with you. And then that person gave me a call, and one of her first questions was, do you have flat rate pricing? Can you send me your pricing sheet? And I said, no, I don't have flat rate pricing. And she said, well, how do you do your pricing? And at the time, my answer was basically, I said something to the effect of, uh, it's a $125 trip fee, and if you want, if it's going to go over $125, I can just give you a call and get approval. But otherwise, it'll be $125, and then eventually I think y'all will stop asking for me to call you every time it's over $125, because you're going to find that I know what I'm doing, my pricing is fair, and you're going to be very happy with me. That's how all my other clients have turned out, is they start off, of course, wary of pricing, but then after a month or two of you kicking ass, knocking out the work, charging fair prices, they just start sending you work and they don't worry about anything. But anyways, Rentals America, they flat out just said, we can't work with anybody without flat rate pricing because they're a corporation and they have policies and that's just the way it is. That's okay, guys. There's 80 to 100 property management companies here in Tucson. I'm working like frequently, like almost full time basically for two of them. I've got another handful that I do less work for, and I've got another handful that it's extremely rare, but every now and then they just call me because there's something they need me to do that nobody else can do. All of them know that they're not going to get a price from me in advance, unless it's like a big job. If they want an estimate, I'll give them an estimate, of course, but they all know they're not going to get an hourly rate. They all know that they're not going to get any sort of standardized rates. They know that I'm going to do the job and then invoice a fair price for it, and because I am fair, they do keep sending me all the work. But yeah, so I lost that one company, Rentals America, because I didn't have standardized pricing. Rentals America is a drop in the bucket. The people that want to work for them can standardize their prices. That's going to mean that they're sometimes charging too much and sometimes charging not enough. And that's okay if they've got a mathematical system worked out so that in the end they're still making the money they want to be making when it's all said and done and wrapped up for the month. Nothing wrong with that. But I guess my point is, I don't believe that flat rate pricing is a good thing, and I definitely don't believe hourly pricing is a good thing, because hourly incentivizes laziness and inefficiency. So if y'all have any other questions, uh, specifically on pricing especially, go ahead and leave them in the comments, or email me at bulletproofhandymanbusiness at gmail.com. But otherwise, I feel like I've done yet another good job of... Un of of going over how I do my pricing and why it is not standardized. And for those of you who think that it's unprofessional, it's okay with me that you think it's unprofessional, but you should understand, if that's your opinion, that that is simply just an opinion and that I am not an anomaly and that this is a perfectly normal way to run a business like this is to develop the reputation as the guy who takes care of business and charges fair prices. I am like the maintenance department for some of my property managers. They don't think about maintenance, they don't worry about maintenance, they forward everything to me, later on they get an invoice, it's always a fair invoice, and I've taken a giant, giant amount of their workload off their plate, they're grateful for it, so you don't need flat rate pricing and you don't need hourly 